Good afternoon, Infinite Hollywood and Marvel Universe fans. Wes Tron back here again with another review for you. Today we're going to do Marvel Universe X-Force box set featuring Deadpool, Wolverine, and Warpath. I was never able to find Warpath at retail, so I'm really glad they re-released this set. Um, and I really like the look of the Wolverine here, much better than the uh, Wave 1 Wolverine, which was just kind of a repaint that everybody knew was going to end up as brown and tan. Uh, Deadpool's pretty cool. He's not uh, really from my generation of this version of X-Force. I liked the uh, first gen before he showed up, but I do like the character. I like the look, so looking good. Great art over here on the side. I'm not really sure who the artist is. It's not uh, really blatant to me from the uh, design. I'm, I'm not sure, but it looks good. I like it. I uh, like that you can see all the uh, figures. There's a nice explosion in the background, I think, so that's pretty cool. Uh, little shield logo here at the bottom with whatever they're calling it now. It changes like every month. Uh, X-Force on the side. On the back, got a picture of all the characters. little uh, short bio. Uh, Avengers cross sell right here. I've got this set too. I may do a review of it. Uh, Steve down here pointing and yelling about something. He tends to do that. And it's got a quick little bio for uh, the X-Force. With mutants endangered and hunted across the globe, Cyclops made the decision to create X-Force, a mutant black ops team under the command of Wolverine. The silent squad of dangerous mutants performs the missions missions too, dirty, too dark or dirty for the X-Men. When a threat looms over the mutant race, X-Force takes care of it, quickly and silently. Pretty accurate, I'd say. Um, they sort of disbanded and rebanded. It's... Kind of weird, a bunch of characters just up and left, which kind of sucks. I'm not as uh, big a fan of the new lineup, but the figures look great. Let's get them out of box. So here we've got the X-Force uh, figures out of packaging. And uh, for the most part, they look pretty good. Uh, there's a couple weird things. Uh, I did have to fight with the packaging quite a bit to get these figures out. Um, they they have that thing where they kind of jam their hands through the, the, the plastic bubble, so... That made it a little tricky. Um, I did warp uh, his swords just a tad coming out, and also the knives on Warpath, but uh, it wasn't too bad. They, the weapons seemed to have straightened out by themselves mostly. Um, let's go ahead and start with Deadpool. Um, this is pretty much, it looks to me, like the uh, XMO Wolverine series Deadpool, the one that came with the big gun. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Is uh, Fortunately, his swords fit in his hands rather well. I really like that. Um, he's got a good grip on him. It's not you don't have a uh, Jedi problems like with the holding lightsabers. It looks really good. Um, he's got uh, not great movement in his abdomen. Oh, wait a minute! Looks like there's some paint in there. Yeah, he does have some movement. Look at that. Not bad. Um, decent movement on his head. You know, it's not perfect, but when is it? Good range on his shoulders. Go out to about there. The reason I'm going over this is because each figure has different articulation. Uh, elbows into about there. He's got very small uh, ball joints in his hips, which uh, I, I don't really like these kinds of ball joints. I don't like having to like position and then swivel and stuff, but to each his own. This is one of the problems I had coming out of the box. His leg is really curved. I will be able to fix that with heat, I think. But, uh, come on, guys. Just put it in a tray. I don't need a, a little card bag. I don't need a, uh, a bubble or anything inside my uh, figure's packaging to show me how cool he is. I mean, it's X-Force. Kids aren't buying this crap anyway. So, just give it to me the way you used to give me G.I. Joe's, and I'll be fine. I don't need stuff like this that I have to fix. But, uh, yeah, detail's pretty good. Like I said, it looks like his uh, second XMO figure. The first one I didn't like very much. It was a decent body. It just had its problems with legs and stuff. It has decent articulation. You know, double knees. Good range on the ankles and whatnot. Uh, the only thing I really have to worry about is fixing this leg and fixing the uh, sheaths on the back. The uh, As you can see from in-package, this is pretty stiff plastic here like that's not going to be easy to fix and it makes me wonder how they even got warped in the first place but I'm not going to be able to store the swords in there for fear that they're going to warp again as well so I don't know Deadpool's okay like I said he's not my favorite character from the book anyway but it's an alright figure 
it's just difficult to get him to stand right now. And we'll just set him over here while everybody else falls. Yay! <laughs> Alright, we'll go on to Warpath. As, uh, this is one of the main reasons I got the set is I was never able to find him at retail. Um, they did decide to do uh, gray on him instead of silver, which is good. It works with the set. I like it. Um, nice range of motion on the head. Good side to side. Up and down, not bad. You know, spins, all that jazz. Uh, he's got more of the uh, typical Marvel Universe articulation that you used to be used to. Um, good, good range in the midsection. And a lot of people don't call attention to this, but Marvel Universe, like G.I. Joe, does have side-to-side -side movement. I don't think everybody realizes it because it's so stiff. But yeah, good side-to-side -side movement. Ball-jointed hips, double knees. Uh, good range on the ankles. I like the range on the ankles, especially on tall figures, because it means you can, you know, make them squat with uh, relative ease. Um, he's got a little bit of a wash on his arms here. Kind of a, a grayish wash, I don't know, not necessarily dirty, just kind of, I don't know, it, it kind of looks like a, a, like faux bronzing, that sort of thing. But yeah, paint's not bad on him, looks pretty decent. I'm surprised they actually went with the uh, the gray in, in the mask here, that little patch of gray on his nose, that's a hard thing to do. But it looks good, it came out great. Um, you do kind of miss the... Uh, thigh swivels and the side-to-side -side rocker ankles on all these figures. Um, well, the side-to-side the -side on all the figures, but the thigh cuts particularly on him. Being a, such a big figure, I'm just, I guess I'm getting used to it from the other figures in the series, and I really miss it already. Uh, only two problems I had with this figure were, one, uh, his knives, they can be held in his hands, but they're kind of weird. Um, and you can only store, it appears to me, one at a time in his sheath on the back. When I think in the comic, he actually has, you know, a crisscross sheath so that you can store both. But it looks to me like there's only enough room for one. I've tried putting the other one in and I about bent it to crap. So, still, pretty cool. Uh, the other issue I had was his belt. Um, you may not be able to see this, but there is a dot of glue right here where they glued the belt in. But almost immediately it must have slid down because this thing is glued solid at an angle. It looks really odd, uh, especially because you can see these straight paint marks here where you know a belt is supposed to go across there. But I'm worried if I try and unhook this and move it up and re-glue it, that I'm going to have a big you know, spot there on his crotch, and that's never good for social functions. Lastly, we're going to get to Wolverine. Wolverine I was really excited for in this set. Uh, like I said, I wasn't super thrilled with the one in Wave 1. Um, but I, I like this one pretty good. Um, he is uh, in good scale to the other figures. I mean, they'll probably never get scale perfect in any line. But you can see how much shorter he is than Warpath. I mean, that that's pretty good. And Warpath is like, what, 20 feet tall? He's supposed to be 5, whatever. Looks good, though. Um, he's got a new head. Uh, very reminiscent of the art style used in the book. Got the shorter ears. I like that a lot. I haven't seen this head before, but I'm guessing it's possible that they might reuse this one for the Astonishing Wolverine coming up. Not sure, though. I'm just tossing that out there. Um, got great articulation. You know, the uh, double knees. The ankles could have more clearance, but a lot of them are not having that lately. Um, I don't like the, uh, the painted joints and the hips. It means that every time you do this silliness that they have designed so that you can get his hip in the right position, you're also scratching the paint. I've already got paint coming off of this joint here, if you can even see that. Um, yeah, the, uh, the weirdest thing for me, I think, is what I didn't see through the packaging, and that's that this body is reused from another X-Men Origins Wolverine uh, character, and they didn't hide it very well. Uh, you can see the panel lining or rather the um, like the suit tubing, I guess you could call it, on the sides of his legs here. But you, what you may not be able to see, and you may still not be able to see it from my camera, I'm sorry, but here's the tiger stripes that are on, normally on the side of his yellow costume. Um, I'm guessing that this was his astonishing costume from XML, um, because it does have the vertical lines here. 
that uh, would have separated the, the blue from the yellow. But you can see that. You can see the tiger stripes up here on his shoulders. Uh, you, you really can't see that through packaging, but um, yeah, it's kind of cheap, <laughs> kind of lazy. But I guess they have to go with what works, the parts they have available. Uh, they have this odd um, flesh-colored wash on here that just looks odd. It looks like he spilled powder on himself while he was sweaty. It's like exactly what it looks like. It's very weird. But, um, yeah, overall, this is a pretty good figure. Um, you know, he's got good articulation. The only issue I really have with articulation other than the ankles is uh, his head. They didn't do much to uh, give it ball functions. It basically spins all the way around, and that's about it. I mean, almost no side to side or up and down. But still, good figure. I like it. I like the shortened shoulder pads. I, uh, I like that they... Uh, you know, gave him uh, the uh, kind of buckly boots that he wears in the uh, comic. I think it looks good. I think it's uh, it's going to work pretty well. And he's got that great hinge, or uh, ball, I guess, in his midsection. But yeah, there's not much to say about these figures. Uh, if you had XMO, uh, you know, the X-Men Origins movie, if nobody knows what I'm talking about there, um then you know what to expect. If you have Marvel Universe, you know what to expect. Good set of figures. <laughs> um, you can see they all look good together. Uh, it will make you want the Archangel if you want to pay 60 bucks for that. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I did enjoy the Marvel subscription when I had it before. But I don't know. It seems like a lot for a 4 inch toy. But anyway, this is the... Uh, Marvel Universe X-Force set. Um, yeah, check out Infinite Hollywood for all your pop culture uh, needs. Um, that's pretty much it. I don't have much else to say about these figures. Standard fare, but they look good. I think I paid uh, 25 for this from BBTS. I believe is right. Um, I got this and the uh, uh, Classic Avengers set. For I believe it was 50, it might have been 45, but it's about standard fare. The only thing that you're really missing with this set that you would expect in a normal release is stands. And uh, that's not going to kill me, but it honestly would help a little bit with some of the warping. But anyway, this is Wes of Trown saying you guys have a nice day. Talk to you later.